Josh Rives here and today I'll be going through question 8.4 of quantum field theory for the gifted amateur. So a spin half particle is in the magnetic field aligned in the y direction. The Hamiltonian can be written as this and use the Heisenberg equation of motion to show that this. So first of all, um, what is the Heisenberg equation of motion? The Heisenberg picture states that the quantum states psi do not evolve in time so they are fixed however the operators that act upon it in the Heisenberg picture they change with respect to time so it's given by Heisenberg's equation of motion which is 1 over i h bar and it's given by the commutator of this uh, operator with the with the Hamiltonian. So yeah, so it's important to note that all the pictures of quantum mechanics they are actually all equivalent. There are different ways to write the time evolution. So how do we apply it in this scenario? So we have our Hamiltonian. So let's first write down. Uh, so we're doing question eight point four. So write down Hamiltonian's equation of motion, which is the time evolution of an operator is given by the commutator of that operator with the Hamiltonian. So in this case, in this problem, we're given the Hamiltonian is equals to omega sy. So it's a spin in the y direction. Uh, so this, so if you have a quantum state psi, then the Hamiltonian acting on it, it will tell you how much, because the magnetic field points in the y direction, so this sort of makes sense. So, uh, yeah, and omega you see later has an interpretation of some precession frequency. So, how do we go about doing this? So, uh, d. So if we want to apply the time evolution of let's say the S Z operator. So the S Z operator. Yeah. So the S Z the time evolution of the S Z operator is equals to one over i h bar commutator of S Z with S Y. Uh, with, with sorry with h which is omega s y and this in turn equals to omega over i h bar s z with s y now what is s z commutator s y we can refer to the spin commutation relations so s z with s y is simply minus i h bar minus i h bar s x and that equals to minus s minus omega s x if you want to find out more about these commutation relations please refer to my spin in quantum mechanics or spin half in quantum mechanics video so we have sh with that we have shown the first result now the second result is just as easy so it is s x equals to 1 over i h bar s x with omega s y and that is simply uh, omega s z so it is although the question doesn't ask us to do so but if we compute the time evolution of the time derivative of s y we simply get s y with omega s y and that is simply equals to 0 so the time evolution there's no time evolution for the sy operator the spin in the y direction so uh, and then last part they said give a physical interpretation of this result so if we compute the expectation values of sx and sy and sz we see that uh, basically uh, the, uh, the sx and sz they form coupled differential equations right and these couple of differential equations have solutions of the form uh, let's say cosine omega t so it, it is an oscillatory solution so what this means is that if we have the spin in some magnetic field that's pointing so, so some magnetic field pointing in the y direction you have the magnetic field pointing in this uh, in, and the B is pointing in this way also then you have a spin let's say it's aligned 
this way then what happen is it would encircle the the y direction it will rotate about the y direction such that at a frequency at an angular frequency omega based on these two equations for the time evolution of the sx and sz operator so remember that in classic in classical mechanics we can also derive this uh, result this precessing result i think it's called precession so yeah so there's a quantum and uh, you see that if we take that time expectation values if we take the expectation values of the operators we do repu reproduce the classical results as expected so with that we have completed question 8.4 i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please leave a like and subscribe and have a nice day